says, you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good <coughs> and able I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Praise God. Glory to God. Mm. Thank, you, thank you, Father God. We worship you today. We thank you for this day that we have to be with you. Glory to God. We thank you for your son Jesus and his precious blood that was shed for our redemption. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that came to bring us into the light of the gospel, the glorious light of the gospel, out of blindness, out of darkness, but into the liberty of sonship. Glory to God. We dedicate this time to you today. We ask you to speak to us through your word and by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that in the hearing of your word, faith is coming to us. And not just faith, but the wisdom of God is imparted to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, that we might be doers of the word, not hearers only. Glory to God. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Well, we're here live with you today. We're thankful for those of you who could join with us. We've... Uh, we're online now, I believe. <laughs> Thank y'all for your patience. I'm getting some things straightened out here. We just had such a sweet time of worship. Amen. Amen. And we're just so thankful to the Lord for all that he has blessed us with. You know, if you're out there, I really want to encourage you to, to open your heart to the Lord today. And, and we need to live every day as, as God's children, as his sons and daughters. We need to live every day with an attitude of expectation. We've been born again, the Bible tells us, unto a living hope. That means it never dies. There's always something more to expect in the vastness of God's mercy toward us and his grace extended to us. Amen. Amen. And so if you need healing in your body, I believe you can receive it just as you sit under the word of God and you begin to apply it to your life. <laughs> If you need the wisdom of God, I believe the Lord's made wisdom to you. I, I don't know about y'all, but I know over the years, I think most people would identify with this. I know over the years there have been times I just didn't know what to do. I had an issue that was challenging me or confronting me in life. And I'd go to church and I'd hear a message and the Lord would speak to me through it. And he would address it like that message was just for me. And then later on I'd talk to somebody else and they had a different need. But they'd say that message was just what I needed. And somehow the Lord was able to speak to them what they needed to hear, while at the same time speaking to me and countless others what they needed to hear. And so we're just trusting God to uh, speak to your heart, to impart his wisdom to you, uh, to encourage you. If you're out there and you feel like you, uh, you know, sometimes you just find yourself so challenged, you feel uh, 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 like a saying Willie George used to use, lower than a snake belly in a wagon rut. Uh, you know, but God's got answers for you. How many times did Israel come to a place in their experience that it looked like everything was over but the shouting? But then when all was said and done, all they needed to do was shout. Remember Jericho? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Glory to God. You just got to make sure you're shouting the victory, not defeat. <laughs> Amen. Right. Glory to God. We'll turn very quickly, if you would, to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We're going to pick up in verse 1. I'm going to read through this very quick. I just want to refresh. We've been talking about the power of Pentecost are living as a believer in the present reality of God's power that's invested in us when we receive not only Jesus, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me say this from the outset. Receiving the Holy Spirit is not a matter of convincing God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's so convinced that on the day of Pentecost, he started pouring out his Spirit upon all flesh, and those that would receive it could. Amen? And he hasn't ceased. You still uh, are a candidate to simply receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. All you've got to do is take hold of God's word. And uh, just right now, if you hadn't done it before, say, Father, I thank you. I'm blood bought. Amen. Uh, I thank you that, that because of Jesus, I'm no longer of this world. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. Right, you said the world right. couldn't receive the Holy Ghost, but your children can. So I believe that I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for it. And I thank you for the evidence 
forthcoming, yes, being Lord. able to pray in the Spirit, speak in other tongues. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Now, if you did that, just hold on. You're ready for an adventure. Amen? <laughs> I remember my own testimony. I was raised Methodist, and we, we laughed at those Holy Ghost people that were holding tent meetings. And, and I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter if you were Baptist. We thought you were Holy Ghost if you had a tent meeting. <laughs> Amen? Uh, but anyway, we'd laugh at folks like that. But I tell you what, when I came back to the Lord, I said, Lord, I want everything you got for me. I need everything you got for me because I saw the best I could do, and it wasn't none too pretty. And, and the Lord had mercy on me. It was so funny. I remember I picked up a little book in the back of our Methodist church. Mm -hmm. Bill Brooks was the pastor. Bill and Alma Jean were there. Van was there. And Brenda was there off and on. I think she was in school at the time. Uh, and uh, Bill always had some good books in the back of the church about faith. Right. Had a study guide in our young adult Sunday school class. Young adult Sunday school class was comprised of people from the age of 17. Don Pennington, I believe, was 17 at the time, up to a, a couple that were <clears throat> in their late 70s, if not 80s. <laughs> and, and, uh, and they were they were wealthy people. It was Betty Garland and, and I think it was Hank. They, it was her, uh, they, they, uh, they were cattle people. They had a lot of, a lot of cattle and, and uh, had some interesting testimonies anyway. Sister Betty would come to serve. My, sis my sister, my blood sister Darlene, was laughing one day. She said that uh, everybody came to... We were just all so blessed by the heart of the people. Yeah. They, they had a lady in the church that was challenged, and she was a single mother with a son that had some emotional issues and things. Sweet child, but, you know, he, I think he was a little bit ADHD or something. <clears throat> anyway, uh, she had gotten put out of her rental house rather abruptly, so she had to get another one. And she didn't have a lot of finances, so she couldn't afford to go get a penthouse somewhere. Right. <clears throat> she had to get what she could. And somebody offered her a house at a discount, but it needed cleaning real bad. And this was back when designer jeans were a real exclusive thing, you know, not just, <laughs> you know, for a while there you could drive down the road. You, you drove down Rebalt here, or, or down through Rebalt, you'd see on every other corner somebody selling designer jeans. It wasn't like that at that time. Right. And uh, she said that... Uh, the sister showed up and she was wearing uh, uh, designer Gloria Vanderbilt jeans I remember yes. and had diamonds just dripping off of her but she's down on her hands and knees scrubbing this lady's floor for her yep. you know people just had a heart to serve they they were doing what they did as unto God and they counted themselves privilege to have that opportunity yes. amen yes. well anyway I don't know why I got all, off on that so far <laughs> but uh you know, in that church, they had all these books. Well, I picked up a little book called Like a Mighty Wind by Mel Tari, and I, I, it just witnessed with my heart, I need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and it wasn't because I wanted power to be famous or something. I, I just knew that I needed I knew the challenges that I'd faced in life. Yeah. I, I, all I ever did was suffer defeat at the hands of the enemy, and I, I was tired of that. And I believe the Lord was tired of seeing me endure that. You know, I tell you what, God loves his children. Yes. He, he doesn't view even sinners in an adversarial role. He, right. he, he gave his best for sinners. Mm -hmm. I, I, it used to perplex me. I'd read the Word of God and talk about how the Lord said, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about how God weeps at the grave of sinners. Yes. I thought, isn't that backwards, Lord? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I just, I, I mean, I just talked to the Lord. I said, Lord, isn't that backwards? You, you weep over the sin. I, you know, the sinner God is just reward, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> That's not how God sees it. He sees them as having <laughs> bypassed every opportunity they had for all of eternity to ever be saved That's when right. they die. That's right. And when his, when his child dies, you know, we're all over here crying, and God's up there rejoicing in heaven mm, that they're mm. home and they made it home. Yes, yes. Amen. I mean, they made a journey through life, and there were all kinds of different challenges they faced, yes. but they still made it home. Thank God. And, and uh, he delights in that. And Glory he gets to God. to hug them then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Like well, a parent receiving their child. So Jesus is talking about a necessity here when he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Over Acts chapter 1 and verse 1 it says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Notice he said he began to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to this world to start something. 
Now he's going to finish it eventually, but meanwhile we're to occupy the time by carrying on the work he began. Yes. And how are we going to do that? I mean, he was Jesus and I'm Mike. Yes. How are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. We're going to take his name. Yes. And we're going to use God's word. Mm -hmm. uh, he said out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, we read that last week out of Psalms 8. Listen, if you've never read that much before, you need to meditate on those verses. Yeah. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has he ordained strength. You, you keep talking the word of God and you're going to eventually see it manifest in your life. Mm -hmm. This isn't a one and done situation. See, a lot of us have said anything but God's word in relation to the issues that we face. And, and we've talked about the mountains incessantly, but we're now learning that we have to talk to the mountains. That's right. And we speak to the mountains with the authority of Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. and, and, and think about it this way. If Jesus were to stand where you're at and speak to a mountain, would you have any doubt that it was going to be removed? I wouldn't. But you know what? It's Jesus who's living within us. It's the the uh, the anointing of God that's upon us. Same Holy Ghost that anointed Jesus for service. Yeah. Acts ten thirty eight. Have God anointed Jesus? Amen. Yeah. With the Holy Ghost and with power, Jesus. Well, He's anointed you today. Why did he do that? He didn't just want to have you, you know, give you a bunch of giggles and goosebumps. It, it, there's a practical reason for the baptism of the Holy That's Spirit. Right. It's not so we can become exclusive and get all snooty and think that we're superior to other believers. If anything, we ought to be a better friend to other believers because now we can pray in the Spirit and intercede for them. That's right. Even those that disagree with. And I've seen that. I, I remember. I hadn't planned to share this today. I'll just, I'll, we'll just follow the Holy Ghost, okay? Yeah. I remember years ago, I used to work out. We had several fellows in the church. We'd go down and work out at the, the gym. It was called Spa Fitness, I think, something like that. And we'd go in there. And somebody found out I was a, a they called me a Pentecostal preacher. Well, I'm not afraid of Pentecost, but I was more so word of faith charismatic. Yes. Amen. I didn't, you know, Pentecostals, they, they adhere to a certain dress code usually. And I didn't do that. I mean, I went to the gym. I wore a Taz shirt, and you know, I just I dressed like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I uh, and I just I loved to lift weights. Mm -hmm. I, I'd go in there, and I'd I'd uh, you know I, I, I like the I like the sense of power. I guess I, I don't know that I don't know that anybody loves to lift weights, but everybody enjoys the power. <laughs> I liked it when I could go down to the wood yard to pick up yard to pick up firewood. And one day I was down there, and this lady asked if I could load a couple of bags of coal in the back of her car. And I reached over and got one bag with each hand, and and it felt like picking up a bag of charcoal. But it wasn't char as hard. They were hundred pound bags, mm -hmm. and I got one, and it wasn't. I didn't break a sweat, and I, I couldn't. I picked up a fifteen pound bag of bacon, so I could have sworn it was a hundred pounds the other day. <laughs> Something has happened. <laughs> but anyway. Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I, I got in there. Yeah, yeah. They, these guys decided it was their appointed task in life to persecute me. Yeah, how nice. And I think it, I think it spurred them on all the more. And I'd go in there and outlift lift them. I think it insulted them that I was stronger than they were. Yeah. You know, I think there was a little bit more to this. But they'd get in there and they started persecuting me, started mocking me. Mm. And, and uh, I kept telling, well, you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, I, now I didn't, I didn't start doing that till they started mocking me and pulling these little. Do you know? By the time it was all said and done, they didn't come to my church, but they left their denominational, non-Holy Ghost church, and they're, they're going to a Holy Ghost church. Mm -hmm. Amen. So they saw something. Yes. yes. And I just pray for them. Every time <laughs> I saw I just pray for them. <laughs> I, I, I believe I was leaving more than sweat on those uh, machines that we were working out on and the bars we were lifting. I believe the anointing of God was there. And they got set free. Yeah. And, uh, and glory. You know, I know at least that uh, there was one that ended up dying a couple of years later. He con yeah. contracted HIV it is job right. he was working in a medical lab right. and and he was gone in just a couple of years mm -hmm. and, and uh, but i know that he was born we again because he got filled at. with the holy ghost we know where he's at. yeah amen well anyway uh so jesus is talking about what we need practically in our life as believers see not only do you inherit the benefits of the blood but you also more directly inherit an adversary you used, you used to be his child, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and he took it real personal when you rejected him to choose Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so he's got his, his what is it, his cap set for you in, a, in the worst possible way. He wants to destroy you. And, and the word of God refers to him. Be, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, he's not just God's adversary, he's your adversary. Right. And he's a supernatural creature. He's fallen, but he's supernatural. And so it's going to take something supernatural to overcome him in life. Right. Right. Amen? And, and so anyway, uh, Jesus is talking about a necessity here when he starts talking about the Holy Spirit. It says uh, in verse 2 that Jesus began to do and to teach, verse 1, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he threw the Holy Ghost had given suggestions unto the apostles. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not, what it says. <laughs> Not suggestions. He, he said he'd given commandments unto the apostles. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's no retreat from this if we're going to please God. Right. But it's, you know, isn't it interesting? He's not saying you've got to pick your teeth after every meal or, or you can't eat pork or you can't do this or you <laughs> must do this. Uh, you know, the, the most difficult thing God will ever call you to do is to walk in love. <laughs> and then he'll help you do it. Yeah, he will. You know, well, what about crucifying the flesh? Well, the, your flesh is crucified, and it is part of the love walk to just reckon it so, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, to me, that's it. It, 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 it. On this, what is it he said? All, on this, hang all the law and the commandments. Mm -hmm. it, the law it, and the prophets. The law and the prophets, that's it, yeah. You know, that you walk in love. Well, yes. so yes. here he is, he said... Uh, after the uh, uh, let me start over verse 2 until the day in which he was taken up after that he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem so we've seen that word command or commanded Mm -hmm. in, in two different places here, right? Right. And it's leading up to a specific issue. Mm -hmm. What is that issue? It said he com assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Mm -hmm. So he wants us to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that's an understatement. Yes. He commanded them to be. Now, <laughs> now, what was the purpose for that? Notice this. See, the disciples back then were people, just like there are people today. <laughs> they weren't that much different. They had challenges in life. We've got challenges in life. They didn't like the government. I don't know many people that really care much for the government these days. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so pray, here, pray. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, mm, oh, man, things come to mind and I need to I hold my tongue. <laughs> well, so he said, John, baptized with water. You should be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Look down here, verse 6. When they were therefore coming together. What's Jesus talking to them about? He's talking to them about being able to receive mm -hmm. Holy Ghost power, receive the person of the Holy Spirit, amen, receive that Holy Ghost power, but then what do they do? When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons. What were they doing? Jesus had commanded them. That means he placed upon them some responsibility, didn't he? Yeah. And so what are they doing now? They're trying to reject personal responsibility and shift it back to God. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that familiar? Mm -hmm. That's people today that talk to God about the mountain, wonder why God hadn't done anything about the mountain. When all is said and done and, and, and they're living defeated, they blame God because he never did anything. Yeah. No, he did something back at the cross and Thank through the God resurrection. Yeah. And, and following that, he poured out of his spirit upon all flesh. Not so we could sit back and, and boast that we can talk in tongues, but so that we could walk in the wisdom of God yeah. and in the power of his spirit. Mm -hmm. And not only would we walk free through the enlightenment of his word, but we would be able to set other captives free yeah. and minister to others the word of eternal life. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and so he said here in verse 8, but you shall receive power. Mm -hmm. See, he... he <laughs> what was that old that stupid show homie don't play that game <laughs> God doesn't play that game he, he, he is not going to take responsibility for what he's entrusted to man right. going back to the garden of Eden 
Why didn't God do something? Because he couldn't. He gave Adam the tools to use to do everything that needed to be done. And having given them to Adam, 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 yeah, Adam he no longer possessed those tools himself in that season. Now, he's going to resume that authority. Yes. But not yet, Amen. Right. Jesus requ- regained it and and has entrusted it to us yet upon this earth. Yeah. So He said, "You shall receive power." Now that word "power," there are a number of words that are translated "power" in the New Testament. Uh, one is is um, exousia, and exousia is authority. Mm. For example, Luke ten nineteen. Behold, I give unto your power to tread upon the serpent and the scorpion over all the power of the devil. Mm-hmm. Well, that first word is exousia. He's saying, I've given you authority over the devil. So why does God need to do anything if he's given his disciples? And they weren't even born again yet. We're born again now, and we've got that same authority. We're not going to go into that too much today. But but we've got that same authority. <clears throat> if they had, Why should God do anything if they got the authority to do it? And he's told them to do it. Yeah. Right? And it hasn't changed today. Well, that was the disciples. That was the apostles. Yeah, it is. But we we can look through the book of Acts and see people, you know, people after people, <laughs> person after person get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And, and they weren't all apostles. They weren't all prophets. Mm-hmm. They weren't all evangelists, pastors, or teachers either. They were just believers. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and so he said down here, you shall receive power. That word power is dunamis. Mm-hmm. You shall receive power. Going back to Luke ten nineteen, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon the serpent and the scorpion over all the power. That second word there is is dunamis or ability. Yeah. Yep. Over all the power of the enemy. Mm-hmm. I've given you authority. So whatever the devil does, he does it by permission. Yeah. Or neglect of those in authority. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Kind of sobering, isn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> You need to speak the word over your family. There's somebody out there right now that you're struggling because you've suffered losses in your in your personal life, mm-hmm. and, and and it's not God's fault. God hasn't failed you. God hasn't mm-hmm. forsaken you. But you've got to start speaking His word. Right. You've got to start telling the devil, "Hey, devil, my family is off limits," and get ready to be challenged. But listen, you can be challenged and and walk this through to victory, or you can right. just keep being challenged and lay in defeat. Right. Start speaking to the devil. Mm-hmm. Tell him, I, I know who I am now. I'm a child of God. Right. I'm an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ right. Jesus. And I've got his name to use, and I take authority over you, devil. Yeah. And, and if yeah. it's sickness, start talking to that sickness. Yes. Get into the word of God and see what God has to say. He, he told me, tells me uh, to this day, he says, that Jesus bore my sins on his body, that I, being dead unto sin, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes I was healed. Yes. So I was already healed. I'm not trying to get healed. Right. I'm declaring that by faith I have already received healing. Yeah. You start talking to your body and remind your body what God has done. You start speaking over your loved ones what God said in Amen. His Word He's done. Amen. Healing is a children's bread. That's right. Glory to God. Jesus Himself said that. Means that it belongs to us. It does. Amen. And, and bread is a standard. I mean, it's a necessity. You've got to have good biscuits if you live in the south right Right. (laughs) well anyway that might be stretching it but look down here to verse 8 he said you shall receive power ability divine ability explosive miracle working ability you've got everything you need to overpower the adversary right whatsoever we're told whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world now why does it say world it means that the devil has got nothing in his arsenal that is sufficient to resist you when you understand who you are and you start walking in the power of Pentecost declaring the counsel of God's word in the authority of Jesus' name. Robin, you need to speak, honey. I've mm. already gone long. <laughs> I'm taking notes. It's so good. With power comes responsibility. Yeah. Amen. The yeah. disciples, we, we looked at this, but I think it's worth referring. The disciples sought to shift responsibility, and Jesus had none of it. Yeah. He said, you'll receive power. Right. You don't need to know what God's going to do or when he's going to do it. You need to occupy your time with what God's given you and, and how he's tasked you. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Go ahead. Mm. <laughs> That's <laughs> I want to yeah. pause and think on these things. <clears throat> That's a good word. Yes, it is. And and 
that word from our Father is exhorting us that we have tools. Amen. Yes. We have power. He's given us power and authority, <clears throat> which I love because he knew we would need power. Amen. How many, how many think we don't need the power of God in this day? Amen. We need the power of God in this day. Thank God for the power of God in this day. Yes. And I keep, I, I, somehow I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember if it was Psalms 91, or it was one of the Psalms. Well, it's in more than one place. I'm thinking about people who the devil has tried to take advantage of because they know they blew it. Yeah. They don't have any issues about the fact Thank that God. they know they blew it. They needed to repent for blowing it. They repented for blowing it. They forgave themselves for blowing it. They did what they could to to fully surrender to the Lord and give God room in their lives. But the devil's trying to beat them over the head and pull them out of their rightful place. The body of Christ, we need to get people restored. Oh, precious is the flow that washes white as snow. Yes, Amen. yes, yes, yes. We need people. There are believers that are sitting back <clears throat> on the back row or in the back corner or however you want to say it, passively watching what's going on, thinking that they don't have the right to stand, thinking yeah. that they don't have the right to resist the devil, thinking that they don't have the right to take authority over the devil in their own blood family. Yeah. But they do. You know what, God, <laughs> you know, we, most of us that are in, in, the, in, in the Pentecostal experience, know of folks like John G. Lake. Do you know what brought John G. Lake into the <laughs> experience of Pentecost? Yeah. His family was dying like flies around him. Yeah. They had a chronic Sad. congenital condition and, mm -hmm. and and many of them had died and he finally said no more. No more. He went to a John Alexander Dowie meeting from <laughs> what I understand and because and, they, you know, word gets around. Those Holy Ghost people, oh, yes. folks start talking about them. Right. <laughs> right. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So they started talking about him. He had heard of him, and he went to that meeting, and he found out he didn't have to sit back and let the devil ravage his family any longer. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then there was Smith Wigglesworth. Yeah. yeah. Remember how he came to the Lord? <laughs> his precious wife. Bless her heart. She truly, that woman. <laughs> she had to be filled things. with the Holy Ghost walking she in love as she did. She clearly loved God. She yeah. clearly was surrendered to God. Mm. She clearly loved God. And, and loved Smith. And loved Smith. But but she drew a line in though. her surrender to God, <laughs> she was empowered by God. Yeah. In her personal surrender to God, you know, when we say surrender, and I don't know, maybe it's a, a, a thing of our day. People act like, oh, I don't want to surrender to the Lord. You, you know, know, you can't trust <laughs> him. All he did was die for you. <laughs> yeah, all he did. Right, right. Which is so ridiculous. Yes. Exactly sarcastic tongue-in-cheek yeah. but it's like God has so much better God has so much more God Amen. has provided and, and back on Smith Wigglesworth wife remember the testimony that he told her he tried to forbid her to go to church she knew she was going to church he knew she was going to church he went and hid all of her shoes so that she couldn't go to church. <laughs> yeah, so apparently, he he, apparently she found uh, who was she that her, she got to submit to her husband? Found, right? her, found her galoshes, and when she found went to church in her, you know, probably felt that was a little, you know, not not ideal or appropriate, especially in that day and time. Propriety was so very important. But she wore her galoshes, went to the church service, came home. Apparently, I'm guessing it was a Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, or whatever, if they had an evening. Because she came home, and remember, Smith had locked her out of the house. She could not get into the house. Well, and, <coughs> but she sat, slept on the stoop she, with her back to the door. She, she leaned against the stoop of the back door, pat, uh, went to sleep, and the next morning he was looking for her. He opened the back door, and she, fell, in, she, she fell, in. fell in on the, on the floor. And she bounded up, and she said, Good morning, Smith. What do you want for breakfast? Uh, okay, <laughs> now there's something I want to say that's real important here. The magnitude of the persecution she was receiving from him was a glimpse into the magnitude of how much God wanted and needed to use him. He was worth standing for. He was worth believing God for. He was worth interceding for. There are people around us, they are worth standing for. Amen. And there's a difference. Listen to me. I mean, so many different things. But I just want to stay on this for a moment. 
because she was married to Smith, there, there was a divine grace of the hand of God on her to be able to stand. Uh-huh. Now listen, listen, sometimes there's a divine grace to get out of an abusive situation. Yeah, there is. We need to acknowledge that. We need to acknowledge. God doesn't want you to be a doormat. Yeah. He doesn't want Ma- people to be in a punching bag. Man or know. woman. <laughs> right, man or woman, absolutely. <clears throat> but, but there was a grace on her life to stand, and I'm sure that it wasn't easy, but he he did. That's what began to tenderize and got through to his heart. Yeah. That's where some breakthrough came with him. And it was with her giving expression. And listen, she had to have, I don't know about y'all, but if I'd have been on that stoop all night long, I would have really had to resist a lot of flesh. I would have had to resist a lot of carnality. I don't believe there's anything wrong with being angry and sinning not. There is a time and a place to stand up for what is right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whenever well, there's there a righteous, are those there is saying, a legitimate righteous wrong, indignation. It's not just every time somebody's right. flesh gets ticked. Right, right, right. Absolutely. And, and you know what? I mean, people also need to not get mad about the fact that other believers have, have crashed and burned in the past. We're supposed to be there as, as what do you call it, to help pick them up, to help lift them up, to help minister. There is such a lacking of the minister, ministry of reconciliation in the body of Christ today. There needs to be a lot more teaching because it's, you know, God God needs his people. He needs his people. I, I keep trying so many different directions I and I don't want to go in. Somebody posted and I, I shared it too about the woman with the issue, uh, not the woman with the no, issue, no, but the, the woman at the well had yes. been married five times and yes. God still used her. Yes. You think about that, that woman basically evangelized an entire village. She brought everybody home. She sure did. Or, or not brought I everybody back it. out. There of the, it is. Yeah. That's so it. The, oh, oh, sorry. The woman at the well had been divorced five times and Jesus still used her. Don't let people count you out because you have a complicated past. <laughs> Jesus preserves your future. Amen. Well, and I want to say one more thing people there are those that are called you're not called to what people think you should do you're called to what god has has called us to do and there will be times there will be persecution with regards to your calling it's just a reality there was persecution with regards to jesus's calling and who were the ones who got up in arms real important to take notice of this the ones who got in up in arms about jesus's calling were the religious and i don't mean that in a Oh, they were so holy and wonderful. I mean, a false, arrogant, yeah. haughty, uh, condescending, proud, yes, uh, attitude. The kind of people that act like God saved some people because he had to, but he really, you know, just wanted them. And, and here's, a, here's a key component of a, of a ungodly, unscriptural, religious, proud attitude. It is to hold others to a standard you do not hold yourself to. Correct. Yeah. There's always a double standard. And and, all, and with that double standard, they think there there's an attitude of thinking they have the right to criticize others, to to uh, what is it? meddle in the affairs of others or or what have you. And I, I Dad Hagen shared something, I'm not going to go into it this week. It's a real sweet testimony about that and how God hates that. You know, the Word of God tells us there are seven there are seven abominations. There are seven things that the Lord hates, and He doesn't take them lightly. And and we need to be mindful of this, that God wants to restore people to their Amen. rightful position. More than anything, I think a lot of people, as, as they receive God's calling and His forgiveness, then is when you receive the ability to forgive yourself. Yeah. You know, and begin to move forward because we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Thank mm-hmm. God. Thank God. And listen, I do I believe there's a ministry too. Our daughter our middle daughter is in Mexico with her husband and family on doing missions. And they are finding each member of the team is getting opportunities to share their testimonies and in sharing their testimonies with people who are hungry for the things of God, people are getting set free. Amen. And they're so they're like dry sponges. Yeah. They're not criticizing them because they have a testimony to share. They're finding hope in Christ Jesus. And that's what we've done. That's what we've done over the years. Thank God whenever the Lord writes our story and gives us the ability and pulls us out of the bad places and pulls us up out of the failures and up out of the cesspool and is able to then turn it around and and have us share it with others so Amen. that others can be set free that's where that's really i think that's where 
main or the strongest form of one-on-one -on -one ministry takes place is when God opens the door and we go through it. So go Amen. ahead. I don't want to. Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's let's. Uh, you know, let me encourage you to be praying for our nation. Yes. <clears throat> the, uh, let's see here. Get my verse up here. Thank God, the Lord restoreth my soul. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If yes. my people, people which are called, called by, by my name, name, shall humble themselves yes. and pray and seek yeah. my face, then." and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin yes. and will heal their land yes notice we don't have to get every everybody in our neighborhood to pray right everybody in your neighborhood may not be a christian right amen and uh i'm not sure how effective somebody's prayer can be until they confess jesus as lord i'm, I'm you know that's how we enter into a relationship with the father amen yeah, yeah. uh but anyway uh the point is is if we can just get the church to pray yes mm. uh, we're his people today yes it, it says that he can turn our nation around yeah <laughs> you know what it, it isn't like our nation is the only nation or the first nation that's ever endured corrupt leadership right we've got right. a president on on worldwide tv announcing that he sold many state secrets mm. you know Yes. And they're trying to play it down like, oh, that's not what he meant. He was joking. Mm. Well, he said we too many pray. things joking, yeah. We can humble we can pray. And, pray. and I think it's an atrocity what they're doing. To him. I don't think he ought to be put in that position. Amen? Yeah. We need to pray for him. We need to pray for those that are around him and, and whoever might be trying to use him or abuse him. Right. But anyway, we need to first and foremost pray for our nation. Here we are, July the 4th, celebrating our nation's Come birthday. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <clears throat> I tell you, there's never been a better time to pray for a nation. Amen. But, Amen. But let's uh, let's go ahead. If you're out there today, you've never been born again, and, and you want to make sure that heaven will be your ultimate destiny, just do this if you would. Make this confession along with me. In other words, say the same thing I'm saying. I, I come to you, the Lord God, today, mm -hmm. and I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I want Jesus to assume yes. The throne of my life, and and I want His rule established in my life. Yes. Father, I believe that Jesus is alive today, because after He was crucified, died, and and suffered death, You raised Him up yes. by Your Holy Spirit through yes. Your Word. Yes. Thank You, Father. I believe that He's raised up, and that He is my Lord from now and for yes. now on, yes. from now on, throughout all of eternity. Amen. In Jesus' name. That's right. If you did that, you're saved. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're, we're trying to shorten things down. We don't want to occupy your... Well, I do want to occupy your whole day, but <laughs> I'm going to use some restraint. We love you. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of what the Lord is doing in us and through us Amen. to reach your world Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen.